three of those guys, although yep. Severino should be back soon. You know, we talk about the Braves and their rotation. They're down Kyle Wright, and now they're probably out Max Fried until at least the All-Star break, which is yep. just a brutal, brutal one for them. Obviously, the saving grace there. And this, I think, would have been my backup take graph that uh, the NL East is a two-team race now between Atlanta and Philadelphia. Because I want to go ahead and bury the Mets. But I'm going to bury them... the Mets? Hold on. Give me a minute on burying the Mets. Why are you tempted to bury the Mets right have now? Have you John? seen how they have been playing lately? And again, talking about teams where the rotations have fallen apart, uh, Max Scherzer uh, apparently is a sticky stuff abuser and also is hurt. Justin Verlander has made all of, I think, now two starts this season. You know, and now he's being counted on for a, a ton on top of that. Uh, Jose Quintana, hurt. David Peterson, bad and also. I think now hurt. Uh, that rotation is a real problem for them. Mm. And as I think we've kind of talked about, you know, when we talked about the Mets in the off season, there's not, you know, a, the strategy they had, they, there was not a whole lot of available major league depth or better said, I think the rotation in particular, there was a lot they had to add to it because of what they lost in the process. Carlos Carrasco is the other pitcher I'm thinking of who apparently will be back relatively soon, but still did not pitch well before getting, going on the injured list, may have been hurt, but also not a guy I think who's going to be any level of difference maker at this point in his career. Like, I really worry about the Mets and how they're supposed to keep runs off off the board because the other problem the other problem with them is their bullpen is not good either. Yeah. And I think we knew that already at the start of the season was going to be a problem, particularly once they lost Edwin Diaz. Mm. You know, that, that was that was always going to be... Yeah. You know, I think if you'd, if you'd asked us flash forward to the deadline, what are the Mets doing? I would have said, well, they're probably getting a reliever. At least one, probably two, maybe three. Yeah. Now you talk about what are the Mets going to do at the deadline? You're sitting there thinking, well, they probably need, they definitely need a reliever. They probably need a starter. I could imagine they need a bat somewhere else in there too. Catchers kind of, there are some real issues with them that I don't really know how they solve them right now, hmm. especially because they've already got Francisco Alvarez and Brett Batty up in the majors, you know? Yeah. There's not exactly another big top prospect kind of waiting down there in their system unless they want to call up Ronnie Mauricio to do, I don't even know what exactly, but I'm worried about the Mets. I am genuinely worried, but I want to give them another week to see how things shake out. In particular, too, I want to see... Because a lot of with the Mets right now, they've, they've been playing some terrible teams and playing badly against those terrible teams, which I think is also another kind of really worrisome sign is, you know, they are playing down to the level of competition and also getting blown out of the water by that level of competition. So that's its own problem uh, on its own. Brett Batty looks like he's going to be a player, though. He does look like he's going to be a player, but I think... Uh, here's here's an upcoming stretch for the Mets that I think is going to tell us a lot. So this week, they are playing Cincinnati and then four games at Washington. That already on its own is going to tell us a lot. If they lose that series, I'm really, really out on the Mets. Mm. After that, three games against Tampa, three games against Cleveland, three games at Chicago, three games at Colorado, three games against Philadelphia, three games against Toronto, three games at Atlanta, three games at Pittsburgh, two games against the Yankees, Three games against the Cardinals, three games at the Astros, three games at the Phillies, four games at the Brewers. I'm, I've basically gone all the way through June at this point. Point being, there are not a whole lot of uh, pit stops in the upcoming month plus of the season for them. Mm. Even the ones that, you know, even a team like Colorado, where it's like, okay, the Rockies stink. Those are still three games at Coors. Yeah. The least fun place in the world for opposing teams to play baseball. And in between, they have Phillies, a series against the Rays, the best team in baseball. The Phillies, right behind or right, you know, above them in the division. The Braves, obviously above them in the division. The Blue Jays, who are great. The Pirates, who are slumping, but you know, still very clearly not a. I, I think the Pirates are neither as good as we've seen nor as bad as they've been recently. But regardless, a Subway series that always just takes way too much oxygen and just ends up being a, a just anxiety-inducing mess for everyone involved. The Astros, the Astros, the Phillies again. Like there, this this was the easy portion of their season. You know, the Mets, the Mets have already had a lot of easy games. They've already played Oakland. They've they've played the Nationals three times. They'll play them four more. They already have seven games against the Nationals out of the way. Three games against the Rockies at home. Three games against the Reds. Three games against the Tigers. Like, they have not made hay in the portion of the schedule where they really needed to. Hmm. You know, they're two games below 500, and they don't really... And aside, again, from that series against the Nationals coming up uh, this weekend and wrapping into the beginning of next week... They don't really get another easy opponent the rest of the way unless, you know, you count either Colorado, which again, at Coors, or a three-game series with St. Louis in about a month, which St. Louis is its own incredible problem right now. Um, and by the way, I'm already going to start taking my victory lap on the I was going to say, not John, the I mean, we have a whole Cardinal section here, but you're, I mean, look, you nailed that. I mean, 
I think we need to get a Fangraphs uh, writer into St. Louis sooner rather than later to ask about uh, Jack Flaherty's fastball velocity. Look, I, I don't know what's so complicated to understand about Jack Flaherty sometimes when he wants to subtracts eight miles an hour velocity off his fastball for reasons that should be patently obvious to everyone. Mm -hmm. What are those reasons? He does not need to explain them to you. Yeah, you don't know ball. You don't know ball, and Jack Flaherty knows that. But for me, it's like the Mets are really coming into the portion of, of this calendar now where they, they can't they can't afford to keep playing like this because they're already... Uh, how many games behind Atlanta are they right now? Nine? Ten? Too many. Too many. They are a lot of games behind Atlanta. And again, yeah. while well, Atlanta has its I own problems... I say all problems, that, and I'm like, what were the Mets up on the Braves in June last year? <laughs> <laughs> but while the, the Braves certainly have their own problems, like, you can't let that deficit keep growing. You know, you have to start chipping away at it at some point. And... I, I just I worry with the Mets that they don't really have the horses at the moment to do it. And a lot of this is just going to depend on, OK, you know, can they get Scherzer back in some semblance of not just health, but also, you know, his earlier form? You know, can the lineup be on up Pete ten and a half games on June 1st? OK, so it's it's not impossible. And if you're a Mets mm -hmm. fan, you're either somewhere between the season is over or the Braves did it to us. Why can't we do it to them? Yeah. But the problem is the Braves just keep winning the division and you're the Mets like the Braves can do stuff like that. The Mets. It's Don't it's just really. you're putting you're putting yourself in a bad and obviously in a bad position. I think just to you know to make that abundantly clear, we'll go to to the tool that makes Fangraphs Fangraphs our playoff odds. That's there not sure. Plenty of other places have playoff odds, but ours are the best. They are the best. Uh, the Mets division winning odds are four and a half percent. That's not that's not what you want. What's their playoff odds right now? Fifty nine point seven percent. So our playoff okay. odds still feel pretty good about them being a wild card team. Mm. But keep in mind, uh, I just and I'll, I'll give you the preseason number too, just because I think that's that's the really important one here. Our preseason odds had the Mets as a twenty nine point seven percent chance to win the division. Mm. Those odds, you know, those already weren't great, and those odds have effectively been wiped out. Similarly, we had them at a seventy seven percent chance to make the playoffs. That's all the way down to f that's already lost twenty points on its own too. Mm. They've already shaved off a lot of margin for error in just six weeks of baseball. You know, they have a lot of ground that they need to make up. You know, we have them now projected to win 89, 89 to 90 games. Again, preseason projection. Uh, that's weird. It says 89 to 90 games, but whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Point of it all being the Mets mm. have hurt themselves with regards to, you know, with regards to their, to their postseason hopes and, I, I don't want to do the yogiism that it's getting late early. Sorry, their projected win total now, their projected win total in the preseason was 90. Now it's down to 85 and a half. You know, they've cut four and a half wins off their projected win total. That's really, really bad. Yeah. Especially because the Braves are now projected to win 100 games. You know? I and know. I, I think, I don't know. I mean, again, like you just said, the, the Braves were down 10 and a half in that division last year and came back to win it. I'm not going to say now for sure that the division is lost, but it's getting really close to that point. You know, yeah. and for as much as the wild card is not the worst thing in the world, there you're still competing with the Phillies, with the with the loser of Dodgers, Dodgers Padres, with the Diamondbacks, with potentially the Pirates, with potentially the Cubs or the Brewers, you know, with potentially the Marlins. I mean, the NL the NL picture is a little weaker, I think, than the AL picture is overall. But still, it's it's you don't want to put yourself in a position where your only way into the playoffs is the wild card. But right now, that's that looks like that's what the Mets have done to themselves already. John, how would you? Uh, explain to the folks who have not paid attention to what happened to the Pirates over the last two weeks. How would you explain what's what happened in their fall from grace here? Is it just injuries? Is it just uh, the law of averages? What's happened? I mean, I think there was bound to be some regression at some point, but I think also it's, the simplest explanation is they've just stopped hitting. Mm. Um, I'll give you their here from from May 1st through May 10th, which incorporates their most recent losing streak and slide. The Pirates are... Uh, sorry, they rank th third to last in baseball in WRC Plus at 53. As a team, they're hitting 179, 270, 276. Their batting average on balls in play is a mere 240, the second worst mark in baseball over that period of time. Only the Twins have been worse in that degree. Their strikeout rate, 26.1%. Again, only the Twins have been worse in that span of time. What has also happened with the Twins in the last week? I, I'm just now looking at this. What on earth? But that I, someone, whoever wins the AL Central is going to have a losing record. I, I want that to be that what happens here. I need them to be under 500. Whoever wins I, I'd also division. like to note every team in the AL East has a better record than every team <laughs> in the AL Central. It's it, it, if this year does not convince Major League Baseball that divisional format is simply no longer a functional thing. I don't know what's going to do it because you have two both central divisions have effectively stopped trying. Mm -hmm. 
and I, it, it whatever. Um, I won't the, join you on this boat. I love some real sicko stuff of the Twins getting to host another playoff series against the Yankees in a wild card round and just getting ousted immediately. One one more stat on the Pirates. Uh, mm-hmm. Home runs hit since uh, May 30th, or since May 30th, since May 1st. Number mm-hmm. one in that category, the Atlanta Braves with 18. Oh, 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 oh.